Hello everybody, this is Petey from Bergsberg Arcade at BergsbergArcade.com and today we're going to be working on tutorial, I believe it's 169. Now we left off in our last one, we had just implemented our, what was it, the in combat and that just basically set a flag for us to let us programmatically know when something is in combat or not. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually look at our project the way it is right now. It's been a few days for me. I believe before that we were working on our attack animation, the melee animation, and it obviously wasn't quite right yet. Let me just shrink this down a bit. Make the picture a little bit bigger. Uh, but it wasn't quite right. It was very jerky. Yeah, as you can see right there. Uh, we'll just wait again. So he does attack every two seconds, but because of the way we have the crossfading, it's not very good. Uh, well, we're going to go ahead and use that the uh, flag that we set up and we're going to start setting it up because we want to have an idle animation for uh, when they're actually in a combat stance and we're going to start setting that up today and we'll also be able to take a look to see uh, this actual attack animation on how it looks. So I'm going to go ahead, head right into mono develop. I'm going to head over to advanced movement. And to start off with, I'm going to come down to our idle function right here. And you notice we have it already set up to check to see if we actually have a string assigned to the variable uh, idle animation. If we don't, we just return out. After that, I'm going to set up another if block. And what I want to check here is to see if my character is in battle or not, or sorry, in combat or not. Now there's Right now, the way we have it set up, we have two different things that are used in this script. We have our mobs, and we also have our players. And if we go ahead and we take a look at the AI script, since this is only ever going to be used uh, for our mobs, at least that's our plan right now, uh, we just went ahead and got a reference, and you know we just called it me. And of course, it's uh, to the mob script that's attached to this game object. Well, unfortunately, we really can't do that with this one here. Uh, simply because it's going to be attached to both our player, which is a PC, and our mob, which has the mob script. Uh, now there's probably a couple other more elegant ways to do, to do this. Uh, but since it's just really meant to be a quick prototype, uh, I'm just going to do it a quick dirty way and call the base method. Uh, and I'm just actually going to say if game object dot get component. Now this really shouldn't be here. No, uh, tell you what. I'm actually going to make a reference up here because I really don't like calling uh, get component every frame because it is really slow. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go right after state. And I'll make a private variable and I'm going to call it uh, well, it's a base character. So I'm just going to call it BC. And then in awake. I'm going to go ahead and set BC. Uh, BC is equal to, whoops, wrong BC. To game object dot get component. And then we'll use generics to get the component type, which is going to be base character. I'm pretty sure this would work, actually. To be honest, I've never tried grabbing the uh, the class that it was inherited from. Uh, but let's just do a quick debug logout just to make sure. And we'll do it actually in the idle um, function here. So I'm just going to say debug dot log and we'll do an error just so it really stands out and we can see it better. And Actually, I want an if block in here. So if BC does not equal null, I'm just going to say debug logout. Um, well, we can go BC dot uh, in combat. And this will tell us whether or not he's in combat or not. So let's go ahead, we'll let it compile. We do have an error right here. Cannot convert type and get component. Uh, let me see. Uh, ba -ba -bum. Let's get rid of that. That's what I was typing before. 
All right, so let's go ahead. We'll fire this up. We'll just take a look. Not in combat, so it is getting a reference to. Okay, I, I was pretty sure I could just grab the, the base class. Uh, again, I don't really like doing it that way, but we'll just see if it switches to true when he comes into combat. And it does. Okay, well, we'll have to figure out a better way to do that a little bit later on, but for now it works. Okay, so if it works, let's just go ahead and say if not underscore bc dot in combat. So if we're not in combat, uh, play this idle animation. Else, if we are in combat, uh, let's just debug log. And we'll do a warning just so it stands out so we can see it a bit better. And let's say, uh, I don't know, I uh, attack idle. All right, we'll let that compile. We'll go ahead, we'll hit play. Uh, I still gotta add that 3D text. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead, keep running up. And when we get to them, there we go. So as we can see, the animation isn't quite right. It's, it just keeps attacking and attacking and attacking, even when it's not supposed to. It's only supposed to attack once every two seconds. And that's because the animation itself is set to loop. So let's go ahead back in. And again, this is something I'm going to put down here in the player or sort of the play melee attack. It is something I'm going to have to move up to the top. But for now, I want to keep all the variables that I'm working with uh, together in groups. And since this involves the animation, what I'm going to do is just come down here, copy this one, move it up to the top, and we're going to go through. We want to grab the animation that has the melee attack dot name, but we don't want to play with its speed. What we want to adjust is the wrap mode. And we want to set that to wrap mode dot. And we've gone over these already before. Uh, what we want to do is grab once. So we're just going to save that there. And we'll come in, let it recompile again. And we'll just start it up. And take a run at our character or our portal. And up to our player. Let's see what weapon he has today. It looks like some sort of axe. Uh, and it is. Now, I'm probably a little too far away. I really should tighten up my uh, range. But that's a very minor thing. It's one variable. We just adjust it, and that's it. But as you can see now, the animation for our attack is showing. And it's pretty smooth. And to be honest, I believe this axe actually is a two-handed weapon, but we have not covered two-handed weapons. We have done absolutely nothing towards uh, the code for two-handed weapons. So for now, I'm just going to let him wield it one-handed uh, because he's just a big, burly personal guard. But anyway, uh, we can see the animation is very smooth, uh, very nice. Uh, we still have to play around with the other animations. For instance, if I start running, it's not quite within range. As you can see, if we can glitch him where he doesn't attack, it's pretty easily fixed. But what we'll want to do is come back up to idle. And we're going to want to actually set an animation here for uh, in combat idle. Now, I believe the pro game models actually come with one. So I'm actually going to go ahead and see. We're at about nine minutes, so I should have enough time. Um, let's see. We're going to come down to our resources, mobs. I'm using the personal guard right now. And while it actually does have a ton of animations, I've taken a bunch of them off. I've only left them on my player characters just so I have a reference of all of them in one place. I just easier for me to look at. But anyway, for the rest of my models that uh, are off the same anime or off the same uh, character models, I've gone ahead and removed them. I'm only putting on the ones I actually want or need. Uh, but anyway, we need some sort of idle one-handed animation, look at attack animation, um, idle attack animation. I keep throwing attack in there, but I don't want it. I want it in combat uh, idle. And if we come up and actually look at our character uh, models, and we'll just go to muscular. 
Um, let's see, he has two one-handed attacks. Uh, hit idle right here. One-handed idle uh, is the actual one we want. So I'm going to click it. It highlights it down here. So I'm going to come back down. And I want to take my mobs, personal guard. And I'm going to add it in under here. Uh, did I get the right one? Yeah, one-handed idle. And I'm just going to go ahead and add it in under here. That's all you need to do. Uh, if you don't actually have uh, this animation for your character, uh, if you're creating your own models, uh, now would be a great time to go ahead and make it. If not, just use something for a placeholder. Uh, anyway, that's done. And we're going to want to make a reference in our uh, script for it. So let me see if we head back over to advanced movement. And I'm going to use the, the one hand because I know eventually I will want to include two handed weapons and proper animations for them. So I'm actually going to come up here and uh, include a one handed in it. So I'm actually going to start it off uh, idle uh, in combat. And I'm just going to put the one H at the end. And of course, if I come over to that model again. I'll just shrink this up. I want to make sure it's here. And right here. So we need to attach it to it. So we'll go ahead, we'll just grab it again. It's right here. So for the people following along at home, do you like it better using the animation clips where we can just click and drag it over? Like so? Or do you like it better using the strings? Personally, uh, I don't use either of my own proje projects. I just make sure all of my names are the same and reference them that way. But I understand that the people following along at home are going to have different models with uh, different animations that are the same animation, but maybe different names. Well, not uh, obviously not the exact same animation. Everyone's idol is going to be a little bit different, but you get the point. Anyway, which way do you like better? Because we'll switch over just using one way instead of having two. Uh, this way here is probably a little, well, I don't know if it's actually lighter. I think this is actually just a reference. So I think this is actually only storing up maybe like 4K. But it does save on making typos. And this way here, uh, I don't think it's really any easier to implement. But anyway, I'll let you decide which way you like better. Uh, we've got that saved. And well, we're already over our time limit, so we'll keep working on this tomorrow. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you one later. Bye bye. How do I get the hole? Football. Yeah, I'm not seeing my hero. I'm not doing much of anything. We made you that house upstairs, so you wouldn't have to come down here. But I'm not seeing him knocked down either.